I'm here with Professor Richard Dean Winfield, and he's doing something that we've been talking about for a long time. Every single congressional district must be challenged. And he stepped up to the plate, or he's likely stepping up to the plate. He's formed an exploratory committee to step up to the plate to be that candidate at great peril. Mr. Dean Wiltfield, it's a pleasure being with you. Thank you. Please Thank tell you. me a little bit about why are you considering running for, uh, what district it is, is it in? This is, this is the 10th district of Georgia, uh, which contains as its largest city, Athens, a university town. Right. Uh, that's fairly liberal right. and democratic leaning, but it's surrounded by a rural, rather economically depressed hinterland, which is extremely conservative and has voted uh, for Republican candidates who often run unopposed. But this time, they're not unopposed. They, they're, they're, they're likely not, not going to be yeah, unopposed. Yeah, I, I am planning to run. I will announce officially in, in January. Okay. Now, it seems to me like uh, people should really consider you because you're doing something none of these other politicians have to do. You're a state employee. Yeah. Tell us what makes it difficult for you to run as a state employee. Well, as a state employee, I am required by law to go on unpaid leave uh, as soon as I become an official candidate. Now, I think this reflects the difficulties employees in general have running for office. Right. They supposedly have a right to run for office, but in reality, an employee will have to give up their work and all the associated benefits if they're going to take on a serious campaign. So and moreover, when the campaign's over and if they lose, they are likely not to have a job to go back to. So it's very difficult for any employees to run for office, and that's reflected in who it is who occupies Congress and the Senate, which are now filled on average by millionaires and multimillionaires. Exactly. So this is going to cost you, even, I mean, not, not counting your pay, about what in benefits is this going to cost you? Yeah, I probably will have to pay something on order of twelve, thirteen thousand dollars of so that, that is So that is your investment in activism to ensure that that, that seed is challenged. Well, I, will, I will take the plunge. Well, I, I think it's important. I want to get positions out there that I feel no government officials and no candidates, including a Democratic Party, including people like Bernie Sanders, have put forward that we need to advocate right. in order to, in a sense, save the American dream and uphold American democracy. Well, what I'm going to ask you to do is give me that litany yeah. of, of positions yes. that you think uh, you, that you're taking, that yeah. you think Democrats in general aren't but need to. Okay. And to frame it all, I think we can say that you know, the United States had this glorious project of, which is enshrined in the Constitution, of upholding civil and political rights. Mm -hmm. They were inconsistently interpreted and enforced, mm -hmm. and there have been more than 200 years of civil rights struggles of various kinds right. that have made them be more consistently applied, but it's become more and more evident that these civil and political rights are not sufficient right. to uphold our social freedoms and, and to make it possible for everyone to have an equal um, opportunity to engage in political, uh, right. political, political self-determination. So we need to advance a new social bill of rights. Mm -hmm. And the anchor of that is recognition and enforcement of the true right to work. Mm -hmm. Not the phony right to work that all the former slave states have, right. which deprive state workers like myself of the right to organize. Right. The true right to work is that where every willing and able adult is guaranteed employment at a fair living wage. And I think a fair living wage is at least $20 an hour. Right. And the reason for that is the $20 figure incorporates a fundamental connection that, that a fair wage depends upon. And that is the connection between one's wage and productivity levels. Back in 1973, that yes. connection between wage rates and productivity gains right. ended. Exactly. And that meant the standard of living of most Americans began to decline. It had risen from the end of World War II to right. 73, because wages rose in tandem with productivity gains. That stopped happening in 73. The minimum wage in 68 was $1.60 an hour. Right. If you adjust it for inflation, that comes to about $10.51. Right. If you adjust it, however, for productivity gains, it's, right. it's over $22. Now, Richard Wolff, uh, econo an economist, has a, a whole subject on that, yes. where, where he 
he proves that, and he also proved that, uh, that the, the success of the 80s and early 90s were actually built on credit. So it is that is such an important concept. What's your other uh, your other platform uh, position? Well, I, I think this is a game changer in itself. I right. Think that everyone knowing when they come out of school, they have a, a full time job at a living wage. They would serve the public good because government would have to step in right. and provide jobs that are going to build a green infrastructure, provide broadband for all, provide all the, all the services people need to get by. Well, uh, and this, of course, would apply to people coming out of prison. They would have a, a job guaranteed to them. People coming back from the military would have a right. job guaranteed to them. We who have employment would know we don't have to worry about being downsized right. on part-time work. We have a fundamental economic uh, security no. greatest. But in addition to that, mm -hmm. this does not itself deal with the imbalance between the power and opportunities of employers versus employees. Right. And we have to take some fundamental steps that no one is putting forward on this score. So on the one hand, we have to transform corporate governance. We have to ensure that employees have a, have a, have a fair foot in the table, meaning corporate boards have to have half their members drawn from non-managerial employees elected by their peers. Right. Some, the, somewhat like Germany. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can and see how that would transform how corporations make decisions about the pay of CEOs. No longer would it be 300 right. times the average worker. It would have a tremendous impact on how automation is handled, how outsourcing is handled, how environmental policies are handled, how corporations relate to politics. All of these things would be radically transformed. On the other hand, we need to do something that uh, will remedy the, the complete disempowerment of employees in this country. Right. Where, where labor unions have fallen to 6% of, of the workforce tires, right. in the private sector. And the NLRB is not sufficient. Uh, the activity of unions trying to organize is, 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 is not working. So we need to step in by law and require all employers, and multiple employers, full-time, part-time, uh, gig economy, freelancers, right. require collective bargaining with the elected representative of their employees. And, I, and that will really fundamentally alter the framework. But again, that's not enough. Right. We've got to deal with the, the balance between work and family. Because you're not going to take advantage of, right. of guaranteed employment and, and employee uh, empowerment if you can't take care of your family. Right. So we need, on the one hand, to require employers to give employees the time to deal with their family responsibilities. We need to have a one-month paid vacation for everyone. We need to have a nine-month paid parental leave. But in addition to that, we have to make the care for our children, for our elders, affordable. We have to have free public daycare, free public elder care. And since we need more money depending upon how many dependents we have, we need to eliminate childhood poverty, right. which affects almost 50% of our children. Right. We need to have a child allowance of at least $500 per child per month. And that will fundamentally transform no, it's, the situation. What you're life. saying is interesting. Uh, a lot of people would immediately uh, look at you and say, yeah. that is socialism and we're in a, not a socialist state. Well, I don't have a problem yeah. really with democratic socialism at all, but many do. That said... Well, no, uh, this has absolutely nothing to do with state ownership I means of production. It's we, rather a matter of making capitalism ethical. It's redeeming capitalism. I, I understand that. Yeah. You understand yeah. that. Yes. The propagandists won't yeah. reveal it that way. Remember, we had something called the Powell Manifesto, yeah. which was the path yeah. to indoctrinate Americans into fear things like what you are stating. As we liberalized in this country, we required more, and we actually realized who really was the driver of our economy, yeah. not the Wall Street guys. Yeah. They are just the master-slave relationship with who drives the economy. I mean, who, not, are, the, who are the real job creators? Exactly. It's not profit seekers. No, it's not. Yes. It's employees. Because right. what do we do? We spend most of our income, much more of our income, then they it do. goes back into yes. the economy, it creates consumer demand, it allows for the hiring of new workers to right. meet that demand. Now, I'm, uh, what you're telling me is yes. uh, music to my ears, I understand it well, in yeah. fact I've advocated much of that, if not yeah. all of that. Yeah. My question to you, however, is 
we are easy here at Netroots to tell that story. Sure. How do you tell that story around Athens where it's completely red with a whole lot of people who have not, I don't, I don't want to call them in, uh, uneducated, I want to call them indoctrinated. How do you break that side? I mean, you're, you're coming to this race at an expense to yourself. How do you plan on making that expense worthwhile by convincing those people in your district? Well, I think the idea of a social bill of rights, right. focusing on jobs, focusing on being able to, to make use of one's personal responsibility, not being stuck on a door, right. but being able to actually work and also to have dignity at work, right. to have a fair share in, in the running of, of one's workplace. This has an immediate appeal to everyone. It does. but And, one... and if one speaks about the positive solutions, the bold solutions, right. that no Democratic candidates have been putting out there. I think I can get through. Now let me. And, and break through the I want to break you right there because, yes. and this is this is very important. Yeah. What I tell all liberal progressives who have all these great ideas, yeah. the one things that thing that we have to come out with is, yeah. people say, how do you pay for it? They don't realize that an econo that an economic system is man-made. So you can you can pay for anything you want to pay for if you want to change the economic system. They don't understand that. You have to write that down in a manner that says this is how we get from here yes. to there. Are you ready to do that? I'm ready to do that, and I want to put forward a complete transformation of our system of taxation. Right. Because I think we need to move the burden. Right. of support for all of these programs that allow us to exercise our rights it should be put more and more on a wealth tax a highly right. graduating wealth Absolutely. tax because wealth is where the greatest inequality of resources to be found and we have the greatest amount of wealth accumulated by any nation in human history it's close to 95 trillion dollars right. the top 1% have as much wealth as the bottom 90%, and it's sitting there, these trillions of dollars, unused. But so we need to mobilize it, and this will grow. Yes, but it's... Uh, it's not just a matter of redistributing a fixed right. amount. Now, Professor, it's worse than that. Yeah. The reality is most of that wealth created is undeserved wealth. In other words, I, what I when I write, I call yeah. most of that stolen wealth. But I like your plan. I think a lot of people will like your plan, and it's been a pleasure okay. speaking Thank to you. Professor Richard Dean Winfield. Good luck. Okay, thank you. And you you take your business. And people can find out more by going to my website, richarddeanwinfield.com, D I E N. You know what? I, I Shame on me that I forgot to ask how to get in touch. Tell them again, please. Okay, you can find out more about me on my website, richarddeanwinfield.com, D I E N, also on my Facebook page and YouTube channel, also under Richard Dean Winfield. And I will make sure and add this uh, as we put this piece out to um, of the professor's website. Thank you very much.